The closed case back here is actually polish. It's all polish. I've never seen anything like this before. What's up people, welcome back to my channel. It's about time that I talk about the Nevada Gretchen Antarctic Spider Summon Day, hence the ornaments at the site here. Let me start off by saying this, I don't like this watch at all, I love it. But before we talk about the watch, let's talk about the brand history. If you're not keen for a history lesson, you can skip this part of the video to the next segment for the review. Nevada was founded in Switzerland in 1926 by Jacob Snyder. In 1930, Nevada Gretchen was one of the first companies to manufacture automatic watches. This led to the creation of Nevada Gretchen's first waterproof automatic watch called the Antarctic in 1950. The watch was worn by members of the American Navy's Deep Freeze 1 during their expedition to the South Pole in 1955. Since then, the brand has become known for its Antarctic robust and reliable performance in extreme conditions. The brand then pursued to release different timepieces such as the Detomatic, the Depth Master, and the Chronomaster, and so on. Fast forward to modern times, the brand was relaunched in 2020 by Guillaume Leydet. Met the guy in person and I must say he is a swell gentleman. Under this new management, in 2021, Nevada relaunched a classic piece staying true to its original blueprint with the embodiment of modern tech, the Antarctic Spider. This is the Salmon Dow version. The stainless steel case here is predominantly brush finish with polish finishing at the bottom of the case you see here and the lux you see here. The case construct here is a smart design. On its side profile, you see how the brush polish outline starts from the lux and then narrows in a little before expanding at the center and then narrows in again before the other end of the lug. Why is that a smart design you ask? First of all, the added curvature makes the watch look slimmer than it already is. Second of all, it's little details like this that adds to the aesthetic of the watch making it look more expensive than it is. We will talk about the price later. Third of all, we can all agree that a polished surface tends to attract fingerprints and scratches more easily when compared with a brush surface. The brush polish at the side here helps prevent scratches whenever the watch is placed down sideways. Furthermore, the polished surface are at areas which your fingers would least likely touch. And they are also at areas that are subtle looking but maximizes the blink effect whenever you look at the watch. The raised bezel here also helps with the blink as they are polished finish as well. There are no holes on the lux, thereby giving it a very clean look. The lug width here is 20mm, which helps gives plenty of design options for bracelets and strap. Nevada provides 13 options for you to choose from. I've particularly chosen the integrated beads of rice bracelet here because I think it's probably the prettiest, most unique and most iconic in the Nevada's collection. To each its own, of course. Not only does it have a good mixture of vintage and modern, this 7 link bracelet also amplifies the blink with 5 beads or links in the center that is polished finish. The two outer links on the side are satin, whereas the side profile of the bracelet is polished. It uses screw pins for micro adjustments. The bracelet tapers down from 22mm to 15.8mm. The claps here is a dual pusher deployment claps which is brushed at the center and polished on the side. The brush area is raised from the polished surface with the Nevada logo embossed on it. This is another smart design. As I've said earlier, a brush surface is less likely to attract scratches. The claps also has micro adjustments capability. Six sizes to be precise. Because of the bead of rice designs and short links, I find the flow of the bracelet on the wrist to be one of the best. There are no parts sticking out and there is no pulling of hair and pinching of skin. I know, I don't have much hair on my hand but that's besides the point. The brush stroke on the integrated part and the bracelet is consistent with the lux, unlike those you see on the Tudor Black Bay. If you don't know what I'm talking about, do check out my review on the recent Tudor Black Bay 41mm. The link is in the description below. The only thing that I'm puzzled with this bracelet is that there is a screw pin on the first link. And why is there no easy removable mechanism on this bracelet, since that is the basic sine qua non these days. The closed case back here is actually polished. It's all polish. I've never seen anything like this before. I can't find a single area here that is brush safe for the opening areas for the opener. 
Because of the polished case back and bottom, when looking at the side profile, it also bounces light. It's little details like this with subtle effects that makes a huge difference to the watch. Although it doesn't say that it is a limited edition watch, each watch is numbered as seen on the warranty card and the case back. The workhorse powering this timepiece is a movement that is originally designed and manufactured in Gretchen, Switzerland, the Soprod P024 automatic caliber. The screw-down crown here has the Nevada logo engraved on it. There are no crown guards giving it a clean look, and the crown size is just right. It's not too big, neither is it too small. It's just right. The dial here is the Panton 488C Salmon, which is, in my humble opinion, the best salmon color tone you can have. Again, to each his own. The sector dial here has a sunray brush design to give an extra shine to the dial. To enhance the shine, the dial is also curved. Last but not least, to further amplify the shine, Nevada uses a double dome sapphire crystal. The thing about double dome crystal is that not only does it have the effect of magnifying the dial, it also reflects light differently on the dial when light passes through it, enhancing the shadows and highlights as you move it around. Whilst this watch may have a vertical and horizontal line cutting across the center of the dial serving as markers for the 12, 3, 6 and 9 o'clock, you will hardly notice them because of the spider on the dial. The silver single baton indexes chamfered to look like a double baton at the 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 8, 10 and 11 position are all polished and are unusually applied vertically. With a dot of superluminova and lines connecting these batons with the center of the dial, this creates a silhouette of a spider, like the insignia of my favorite Marvel character. It's Spider-Man! The dolphin polish hour and minute hands also have superluminova on them to help with readability. The sweeping second hand is also polished. I like how clean the dial looks and how it's not polarizing notwithstanding the spider. The lack of a minute track was intentional. The brand name and wordings are all in black and the date at the 3 o'clock is in white with black numerals. Instead of an applied window frame, I like how the date has painted window frames underneath the cyclops. When changing the date at position 1, you turn the crown clockwise and the date changes instantly with a firm top. When you pull the crown at position 2, this hacks the second hand. When turning the crown anti-clockwise, the date starts tilting at 11.30pm and then snap at 11.58pm. So, what do I think of this piece? I think this is a gorgeous looking timepiece. The smart design case shape and bracelet, the beautiful summon dial, the double dome sapphire crystal, the reliable movement, the quick set date, and most importantly, the proportion of this watch from the case to the lux, the bezel, the crown are just perfect. The finishing on this piece is also very upmarket. All of this for a price from 845 USD to 1045 USD. The watch feels more expensive than it is. Since I'm a sucker for Summon Dao, Stop it! Get some help! I will now say this, that this is now my favorite go-to watch and I'm serious about it. It is very versatile and it goes well with my daily outfit. Nevada Gretchen really knows how to make good watches at a very reasonable price. So what do you think about this watch? Let us know in the comments below. If you're looking for something besides the color salmon and around the same budget but has a squarish shaped design that looks like a Patek Philippe Aquanaut, do check out my suggested video at the end screen section. Until the next one, thank you for watching.